I was born in Greenwich Village in 1927 in New York City. Came to Staten Island when I was 14 months old. I began drawing and painting at five years old. My father was an immigrant, and when he came to the United States, he learned to speak, read, and write English. And after four years, he spoke like he came from London, England. He was so proud of himself that he took up American history. He would tell us stories from the history he learned in school. And he mentioned Tecumseh, the great Shawnee chief. When everybody went to bed, I went into the kitchen and got a brown paper bag and drew the story of 1812 with Tecumseh leading the charge. Papa kept making up stories about cowboys and Indians to keep me drawing. When I got nine years old, he told me to go to the library. So going to the libraries, I learned about each Indian nation and my drawings improved. My father was a great guy to make sayings. And his greatest saying that every day I walk into my studio is, success comes from the backbone, not the wishbone. I practice it because it's good. As my mother would say in her broken English, Gregoria, when are you good? God is a good to you. And I would laugh. And she said, no laugh, because when you're good, you're good to everybody. She was right. They're, they're precious sayings, simple but powerful. I deal in the strongest point of my talent, and that is I'm creative. I'm not the best painter. I'm not, I'm not the best lighter. I'm not the best composition, but I'm creative. Art is interpretation, and when you create, you go to the edge, but you don't fall off the cliff. You're letting the viewer enjoy himself because that's what you think he imagines. That's art, in my opinion. I had a show, and it was my biggest show on 57th Street, Madison Avenue, the richest gallery, private gallery in the world, Wally Finley Gallery. And I was excited and early to go to my show. I got off the ferry, went to Battery Park, and there was a Vietnam soldier with his little five-year-old daughter and his wife. And there were hundreds of protesters throwing coffee cups and cursing at them. It broke my heart. I said, this is not like World War II. We came back as heroes. Look how they were treated. They could get given their lives for their country, and they don't deserve this. So, I says, one day I'm going to paint the true stories of the heroes of Vietnam. And years later, I started painting the soldiers, and my wife came into the studio and says, what are you doing painting military? I says, man, I got the willies. I got to get this out. I wanted to capture the sacrifice and the loneliness and the bravery and the, all the hardships. It was uh, what I felt when I was in the Navy in World War II because I was never off Staten Island and I was, uh, you know, it was in no man's land so I knew what the loneliness was and the hardships, but 
far as the bravery, I think they, th that was enormous for them. And I made them all heroes, which they were. That's why I titled it The Unsung Heroes. And I painted five heroes from my community, like Lieutenant Nick Lear. He was born on Staten Island and he went to Wagner College. He was captain of the football team. He was always a leader. Well, he enlisted into the Marines and he went on his first tour as a tank commander. And after his first tour, he signed up for a second tour. And that's when he never came back. Father Capadano, Congressional Medal of Honor. He was in a safe unit and there were maybe a dozen soldiers ahead, all by themselves, exposed in the jungle, looking for the enemy. And there was thousands of the enemy there, and they opened fire on the 12 guys. Father Capitano jumped out of his safety section, ran out, and in the middle of his run, they blew his hand off. And he went and he gave last rites to the 12 deceased soldiers and being shot out, bullets in him, going to the next one and the next one till he couldn't go no more. I had quite a lot of references. And if I do something mechanical, you have to make it not perfect. If you make it perfect, it would look like a stamp or an architectural drawing or painting. I created the scenes of the battles because imagination and creativity is spectacular. I did 50 paintings. And then I had uh, a show at Wagner College, and it wasn't enough. So I met this guy, Danny Angelus, and it was a gift from God. And I said to him, Danny, I'd like to put these paintings someplace where the public could see them. And here, he found Holmdel, the Vietnam Memorial Museum. He did it. I couldn't ask for better. I feel very honored because the spirit of Vietnam is here. You look at these paintings, I hope it makes a mark in your brain because it shouldn't be forgotten. They shouldn't be forgotten. They sacrifice. They put their life on the line. Anybody puts his life on the line is a hero for their country and above all, making us free. On a bunker in the evening breeze We sat and talked and watched the trees We talked of home and the girls we've known And the 57 Chevy that you once owned We were young and so far from home In a place that we had never known But we were happy and scared so alone We made a pact that very night Amid the panic of a firefight To get together when we got out of here We'd meet in Philly and I'd buy you beer But that 
ever happen We got so close in such a very short time What was mine was yours and what was yours was mine